Hey all, this is a video on how to use a scroll saw. A scroll saw is used uh, in a few scenarios. A typical one is when you want to make really fine cuts and lots of, of curves. Um, it is a very thin blade, so it's good when you want to remove a very small amount of material. The blade is also removable, so you can put it through a hole and make an interior cut on a piece. Versus a bandsaw where you have to enter the piece from the outside, the, the scroll saw you can put through a hole and then cut say a circle within a square uh, piece of wood. So those are some of the times you may use it. This is the jaw and this is the throat of the scroll saw. Um, so if you're cutting a piece of wood that's about as deep as it can cut uh, and this is about uh, as thick as it could cut. Realistically the, the blade can't go quite that. Um, you, you, you wouldn't normally cut that thick. Um, so the way this works is just by bouncing up and down. The uh, the teeth need to face downwards so that it's only cutting when it is pulling down into the table. There's a little throat plate here which you can remove when you're changing the blade. It normally just sits right there. Um, when you are using it, you want your piece to sit right under this little guard. And the guard is adjusted by uh, loosening this and then moving it down. The, at, well, the teeth are facing down so it is cutting only when it's coming down, but there's some friction when it's coming up. So sometimes what can happen is a piece, if it's not well held down, can flop around and that can just be really annoying when you're trying to work, especially really thin pieces. So this helps to hold the piece down onto the, onto the table. Uh, there's another little feature here which is a, a little mechanical pump that pumps air and blows the dust out of the way. So if it's doing really fine work, you can see exactly where you're cutting and the sawdust won't get in your way. Um, the last little piece on here is the tensioner. So now we'll get into changing the blade because uh, you need to do that if you want to put the blade through a hole. Frankly, these blades are, blades are pretty weak, so they, they break, and so you'll, you might find yourself changing it um, every once in a while. So there's a little lever on the side, and you just lift that off, and it relieves the tension. And then over here, you can see the two uh, tools that we're going to use to change the blade. We're going to start with this one. This is just an Allen key, and this is what you use on the top. So you use this to loosen it, and that just comes right out. And then the second tool is this one. And this tool has two parts. The, the first part is a registering pin, and so we put this right in a hole underneath the bed so that it lines up the Allen key right where we need it. And that's pretty helpful, because otherwise it's, it's hard to get it in just the right spot. Um, so we're gonna go down under here now to see how that works. So the pin, uh, it works best when you, if you push down on the top so that it comes all the way down. The pin goes in the hole, and then that lines the Allen key right up with the, um, with the bolt. So then we can just loosen that, and our blade comes right out. There are a few different blades that we have for the scroll saw, um, and they come in a container like this. The primary difference between them is the teeth per inch, abbreviated TPI. Uh, and as with most every other tool, the more teeth that something has, the finer and uh, smoother a cut it'll make, but the more slowly it cuts. Uh, also, the more teeth it, it has, the better it can cut dense materials. So that is how you can do your calculation for which, which kind of blade you want to use. So again, if you're doing something where you want a really nice finish, you can use more teeth. But if you're just trying to move through material more quickly, then you want fewer teeth. Um, so we'll just put this one back in. When you're putting it in, it's important to make sure that the teeth are facing down. So it's cutting when it's pulling down. Um, and this, this blade looks fine to put back in. If for your particular project, you want a different kind of scroll saw blade, you're more than welcome to go out and get them. They're, they're pretty cheap. There are different kinds with reverse teeth and hooks and different set, which is where the teeth are at different angles coming off to the side. Um, these are just fairly traditional scroll saw blades. It's important when you're buying them that they are, are scroll saw blades, which means they don't have pins coming off the sides. Uh, that's for a different kind of saw. So for putting it in, we'll start on the bottom just because that's a little harder to get to. And it's going to go right back in the slot where it came from, um, starting in the front and just going in a little ways and then tightening down on it. 
and then coming into the top. And so what I did is I actually I went a little too deep in the bottom, so I, I don't have quite enough slack up at the top to get it in. So I'm just going to put a little more shallowly at the bottom. All right, I'm tightening there. And now we have enough to grab onto the top width. And we're going to tighten this. Now for, for some blades, you may find that the tension on here isn't, isn't appropriate. It's either too much or too little. So if you do need to change that, that's what this screw is for. So you can adjust this screw to adjust the amount of tension supplied by this tension lever. So we'll apply that tension, and that's pretty good. You, you want it to be pretty stiff. Uh, you, don't, you don't want it to have much slack. So we can just put these back in the holders. Um, over on this side, there are two switches. There's the switch for speed, so either low speed or high speed. You can largely experiment with that to see which speed is appropriate for your purpose. In general, start with low and then move to high if you want to move more quickly. The other switch is the power switch, so uh, off and on. For this, we'll just be cutting this piece of plywood, which is a little thin, uh, thick in general, but should work fine. And we'll just cut off a, a little semicircle. Um, similar to the bandsaw, there isn't too much of a safety risk because it's only pulling straight down into the bed. It has no desire to kick back at you or pull in. Uh, it's just going straight down into the bed. So if you stop moving, the blade's just going to go up and down and not pull the wood any direction. So I'm just going to put the glasses on uh, and turn them on. <laughs> saw there is no back uh, behind the blade so what you'll find is as you're pushing the blade defect deflects pretty significantly so you need to be careful not to push too hard and break the blade you just need to let the blade do the cutting and only push as hard as it will allow uh, as you can see I did a, a curved cut which is what the um, what the, this teensy little blade is really good for um, you could obviously this is what people can make jigsaws jigsaw puzzles on um, the name comes from making a scroll on the top of a violin or, or cello um, because you can get those really tight curves with such a thin blade. Um, that's really all that there is to the scroll saw. There's no built-in vacuuming, so when you're done, just make sure to vacuum it up. Uh, thanks for watching.